What's going on, guys? It's the Black Bonsai Guy, and I am back. <clears throat> Today, I'll be going into uh, my first hive and doing a general inspection and also giving them some uh, sugar syrup where the point of the year where the temperatures are cooling down and I've already switched to a two to one mixture that's two parts of sugar to one part water. Uh, the reason why we do that in the fall is because the bees don't require as much energy to dehydrate that. So what they'll do is they'll take that two to one sugar syrup mixture and they will extract that and they will treat it almost like honey. They'll actually store it in the honeycomb uh, and since it's two parts sugar to one part water, they don't have to fan as hard. It doesn't take as much energy to dehydrate that so that they can eat it at a later uh, point. So we're doing a two to one mixture. I'm also going into the hive and I will be treating for Vieira mites. Uh, so I'm gonna be placing some Apovar strips into the colony. Um, I also will be doing oxalic acid. I'm gonna probably do oxalic acid next week. I gotta actually order the acid. I just got the, the, uh, the tool. Uh, I'll do an unboxing video on that. Um, I bought it from a guy that um, sells them. He makes his own, so I bought it from him. I'll do a whole video on that. But these are the Apovar strips that I will be placing in a hive. And it's basically two strips per uh, 10 frames. So these are the strips, and there's a little tab, you pull it out, and you just sit it on the frame so that the bees can get on it. So I'll be putting those on there. Uh, for those who do not know, April, I mean, uh, Vera mites are a parasitic mite that uh, it, uh, they attack bees, and what they do is they get typically on the, the, the bellies, on the backs of the parasites, and they basically, you know, they bite them and they transmit diseases to the bees and the bees go on and uh, they transmit that uh, disease throughout the, the, the hive. So from what I've researched, uh, Vieira mite is the number one problem across the, the, the world that is uh, basically killing more bees per year probably than anything else. Uh, you got Vieira mites number one, uh, then you get into stuff like small hive beetles, uh, but bees generally do a good job of controlling small hive beetles if the colony is healthy, uh, if the colony is big, they, they generally could do a good job of, um, you know, fighting off small hive beetles. I also will be checking to see if I have any small hive beetles. You generally, I shouldn't see any this time of year, uh, but you never know. You never know, and if I if I do have small hive beetles, I have some uh, little little all traps to where uh, if there were small hive beetles, they will walk across these traps, fall down in it, and be submerged in some uh, oil, and you know they would die. The other thing you have to watch out for uh, is uh, wax moths. Uh, wax moths, you know, typical wax. You have a greater one, which is a little bit bigger, and a lesser wax moth. Those wax moth, they will lay eggs in the um, in the uh, hive, and basically when those eggs hatch, they they kind of they kind of look like a, a maggot, a long maggot, maggot. And those maggots, you know, they eat the honey, they'll eat brood, they'll eat whatever you know is in sight. They actually eat the um, the the actual comb that the bees create. Uh, and they leave behind this, this uh, disgusting looking, uh, you know, waste, basically. Uh, and they'll lay their cocoons all in their hive and they can very easily take over a hive pretty quick if the hive is definitely struggling from, uh, you know, if they're fighting off aeromites and they don't have the numbers up, if they're fighting off small hive beetles and they're not paying attention, that wax moth will slip up in there and lay eggs and those eggs could potentially take over that whole hive within a matter of a couple of days, if not weeks. So uh, I'll be going in there, checking for that, making sure we don't have those problems. And then it's the winter, so you got, you know, everything is looking for shelter right now to stay warm, including us. Um, so you got rats out there, you know, they're, they're looking for a nice warm place to stay. Um, 
roaches are looking for a nice warm place to overwinter, so on and so forth. I don't expect to have any of those problems. However, this week I saw in my backyard, I had a ringtail. For those who don't know, a ringtail is in the same family as possums. They're like a cousin of possums. They're not really a cat. A lot of people call them cats. But a ringtail is actually the state mammal for Arizona. It's one of the cutest things you could ever see. Ever. I mean, the thing is just super cute. I'll see if I can post the video that I had of it. I took it at night. The quality is not that good, but maybe I'll put a, a clip of, of something in there. But yeah, I had a ringtail in my backyard. I actually have a, a, a lip that goes over my door. And uh, on that lip, the ringtail was up there. So I thought something was on my deck. I went outside, I made some noise. I'm looking to see a cat run away or a lizard run away or something like that. Um, something said, look up. I looked up and the ringtail is leaning over the ledge looking at me. Cutest thing ever. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go out there and hive and um, take a look at that. And that's what we'll be doing today. So without further ado, we'll be back. All right, we're back. Give them a little smoke. Make sure everything is in camera. Looking good, looking good. All right.
right. Not a lot of honey left in this one. On this side, they have a lot. Hopefully you can see that. Not drawing this one out yet. Still not really doing nothing on this one. See some boo. So I saw enough, I saw brood, so I know she's still in there. So uh, we'll go ahead and put this back together.
forgot to put the April Vaughn strip in there. Duh. Oh, Johnny. Here it is hard. I'm back. So, first of all, uh, there, there are certain days, from what I'm told in beekeeping, when you feel like you, you're a good beekeeper, you got everything going, and then there are certain days when you feel like you don't have it going. Today was definitely a day where I felt like I did not have it going, um, but I gave the bees some uh, two-to-one sugar syrup. You didn't see that. Unfortunately, Tucson is real crazy because it'll be... It'll be cold at night, it'll be kind of chilly outside, but since if that sun is out and if there's any electronics around, they'll just tend to overheat. So what happened was my phone overheated and I couldn't finish out the video. Uh, but like I said, I gave them some two to one sugar water. Uh, I did a, you know, a, an inspection to make sure that the queen was still there. I seen presence of cat brood. So that lets me know that she's still there, or at least she's been there within the last couple of weeks. Um, bees were not aggressive at all. Um, from what I understand, during the winter, they, they tend to be a little bit more protective over their stores. Um, but, you know, they were real docile, didn't have any problems with them. Uh, but anyway, uh, hopefully sometime over the next couple of days, I'll go back in and check my hive number two. Uh, to give them some food and uh, just do a general inspection and make sure everything's going good. Um, it's, it's cold outside, uh, but by the time noon comes, you know, we're, we're, we're above 70 degrees, so there's no problem going in those hives. We've been dropping into like the 40s at night, um, but by the day, it warms up to about 70, um, 75 at the peak. But um, that's it. I just wanted to let you guys know I, mi I missed the end of the video. Camera overheated. I just went back and gave them some uh, sugar water in my um, ultimate, what is it called? Ultimate Bee Feeder 3, something like that. I got videos on it. Go check it out. 
But anyway, it's the Black Bonsai Guy. I'm out. Woo!